I, I'd like to start off, I'd just, um, if everybody could turn off their cell phones uh, for the service today. You guys ready down there? If everybody could please stand for the presentation of colors. Details! Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Present! Arms! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the opening prayer by Reverend Vandross. Let us pray. Today we humbly bow our heads to you, O Lord. We come to this solemn occasion to pause, reflect, and commemorate those 13 men who bravely gave their lives on the most tragic night of March 19th, 1941. We can never be grateful enough for the sacrifices they made, and we are humbled by the willingness that they put their lives on the line for our benefit. Oh Lord, we ask for your courage and strength to serve you and our fellow men in the like manner as you have done for us. We ask for your continued blessings upon those family members and keep them in your tender care. Continue to bless our great city, the men and women who serve faithfully each day. We pray all of this in the holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome everybody to the 81st Remembrance of the Strand Theater Fire. I'd like to welcome the families of those that were lost that day and those that suffered severe injuries. I'd also like to welcome the Honorable Mayor Robert Sullivan, Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, retired Fire Chief Kenneth Galligan, Retired Fire Chief Richie Francis, Rockton Firefighters, active and retired, fellow employees, and the residents of Rockton. Also, like to recognize some of the uh, political officials that are here. Um, unfortunately, Jack Lally had to send his regrets. Um, Senator Mike Brady's here in attendance, Representative Jerry Cassidy, uh, Ward 4 Counselor Susan Castro. Uh, Shirley Asak from Ward 7, and if I'm missing somebody, I apologize, I'll square you off later. You should have been here earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'd like to invite the Honorable Robert Sullivan to the podium. A 
Well, first of all, good morning. I do also want to recognize Rep. Uh, Michelle Dubois and Councilor Lodge Rita Mendez for being here. I want to thank uh, clergy father, thank you, uh, Reverend, thank you, uh, members of the Honor Guard, uh, Pipes and Drums, uh, President Hill of 144, um, Chief Nardelli, Chief Galligan, uh, Chief Francis, Archie Gormley, former President of 144 as well. Uh, friends and family, again, of those that we lost, the Brave 13, uh, city residents, um, city and school employees, and I also have to do this, so I get taken out of the well, my mother and father for being here as well, Robert and Susan Sullivan. Um, so 81 years ago, uh, on March 10, 1941, uh, the brave 13 heroic firefighters were lost, and the city was changed forever, the families were changed forever. But friendships were, were born. I mean, we talk about Scranton, Pennsylvania. They were born because of that tragedy. And one thing I can say is that the Brockton Fire Department is indeed a family. It's a family. It's always been that way. It always will be that way. And when I go to the wonderful occasions of new firefighters, I say that. I've never served, but I'm so, so proud of the brave men and women that serve and protect every single day in the City of Champions. We have the best fire department, not just in the Commonwealth, but without question in the nation. So today we come together to remember, the, remember those brave 13 men that were lost at the Strand right outside here and to honor those and also honor the family members that are still with us here today. Um, we will never be the same as a result of the Strand. Again, prior to 9-11, it was the greatest loss of life of firefighters in the nation. Um, and we as a community, we're called the City of Champions for a reason and we always, always remember and I just want to thank you, Bill, uh, for what you do every day for 144. I want to thank Peter Reardon, who did the brochure today as well. I want to take a moment also uh, to thank uh, Deputy uh, Albany's, uh, who was just down in D.C. Uh, just this week uh, with Eddie Kelly and President Biden and our great Secretary of Labor, um, Marty Walsh, fighting for the men and women of the fire department. That's what it means to be a firefighter, to always remember the brotherhood and sisterhood. So we come together today, it's a solemn day, it's a solemn day of remembrance, but it's also a day to remember history, because if we forget history, we can't forge ahead for the future. The future of the city of Brockton is great, and it's great because of the men and women that are in this room, the men and women that have uh, come before us, and the next generation of those firefighters and police officers and those that protect and serve, that are the next generation at the schools right now here in the city of Brockton. So I just want to say how proud I am of being the mayor, but also, put that aside, being a Brocktonian. Because when I come to this event every, every year, and I did it as a child, it's to learn about the sacrifice. And when firefighters go and they leave their loved ones every day, they leave their home, they go knowing that they might not come back. They might not. That's the passion and the profession and that really that calling that they have. But I also have to say uh, it's, it's an endeavor of, of folks that truly, truly, truly have their blood relative family, but then the men and women that they serve with. And that was evidence when we had the untimely loss of Lieutenant Mike Mahoney just recently. The outpouring of love and support of everybody in this room and every firefighter that has a badge in our nation. And that just speaks volumes. And another thing that I know is that firefighters never forget, never forget. So when I was speaking to Mr. Reardon this morning, I said, how is Mike's family? And of course, it's a tragic loss like the 13 families I had who faced that death and the unknown of what the future becomes. But the future is always positive because of the men and women that love their job and love the people that they work with. So I just want to say how proud I am of each and every one of the people that are here today. I'm very thankful to be the mayor of the City of Champions. I also just want to say that the Brave 13 are indeed brave, the heroes. And so we will always remember them. I want to thank especially Chief Ken Galligan. Um, please take a moment to look at the pictures out there. The Chief does this every single year. He comes a week early to put that up there. And he just asked me, Mayor, when should I take it down? Keep it up. Keep it up as long as you want because we need to always, always remember what that sacrifice means. So again, thank you, men and women that serve Brockton Fire Department. Thank you, Chief Nardelli, for your leadership and your friendship. God bless the families of the Brave 13. God bless every firefighter in the city of Brockton, the Commonwealth, and the nation.
God bless our great city of Brockton, the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The mayor's been a great advocate of the fire department and our local, and I thank him for being here every year. Um, i also like to thank Councilor Mendez and um, Rep. Dubois for being here. And to speak into the mayor, the city council um, has been a very uh, big advocate of the fire department and our local over the last few years. So I'd like to thank them for all that they've uh, done to support us and our members and our families. With that, I'd like to invite the Chief of the Department, Brian Nardelli. Good morning, everyone. Uh, nice weather, finally, after a little snow last night, so that's nice to be able to lay a wreath later at the memorial outside. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking the mayor for hosting us every year um, in this building, uh, this beautiful building that we have that we're able to um, memorialize um, our 13 members that we lost 81 years ago. I'd like to thank Bill Hill for putting on such a amazing memorial to some amazing people that did some things many years ago. And not only not forgetting, but always celebrating their memory. Jim Plouffe and um, Tim Carpenter always do a great job setting everything up in here for us, and I don't want that to be unseen. Outside, uh, Tim Coppin is always looking over the memorial, uh, the director of parks, and he makes sure that it's always clean and perfect, especially for today. So, I think some of the things as firefighters um, in the Brockton Fire Department, as we arrive and we come to the weeks just prior to so, um, March 10th, uh, we think about those members lost. And we think about the fire service yesterday, today, and tomorrow how it's changed, how it will change moving forward. I think as so many things stay the same, the fire service evolves to what it needs to be in the current time, what it will need to be as we move forward. The story of the strand is a tragic one, tragic one um, that happened just right behind us here. That story is a, was a Mickey Rooney film that had ended early in that evening, early morning, the maintenance personnel thought they might have had a fire, and a gentleman by the name of Roger Finette actually was sent to pull a street box right up the street, box 1311, that still sits in that place today. I think that talks to the fact of what is old and what is new. This is 150-year-old technology that is still used with great accuracy to this day throughout the city for any city resident that sees one of those red boxes. When they pull it, the fire department will arrive. It talks to the dedication of the profession and the calling that we've chosen. When the firefighters arrived, they found a fire in the floor. They started using axes, the same type of equipment we use today. And those axes were opening the floor, putting the fire out. We, they stuck what was called a cellar pipe down there, which we now have on every engine company and we've had since 1941. Still the same equipment that we used many years ago. A lot of the same buildings in the city that we've always had. That event went along to a second alarm, the general alarm. Deputy Chief Murphy was in charge. It summoned Chief Dickinson. One of the things a lot of people don't know, back at that time, firefighters had to have a phone in their house to be able to respond back to alarms. Um, sometimes if they lived in an apartment building, that person upstairs would be the person that would come down to get them for a fire. Unlike nowadays, where I could take this device out and listen to a fire in the Bronx or a rescue in the Swiss Alps. Like, so I guess some things have changed. Um, we've advanced. We've seen the way of the future. Communications on the fire rounds have advanced. When we look at firefighting, we still perform rescues. We still come to the aid of every civilian that needs our help, as well as our own firefighters at times. When we lost that 12 initially on that day, it was a tragic event. That collapse happened up in the balcony. We lost 12 initially. A couple of days later, a firefighter by Fogley Hurley died at the hospital. I think some of the things we forget, though, is the 35 that were injured, disfigured, some not to come back to work. And the ones that did come back to work actually worked for many years after that with devastating injuries. So I think to remember this, we need to remember the whole picture. I sometimes think of days like this, especially now as chief of the department. I think of Chief Dickinson and the monumental task he had not only to notify the families of these brave men, but also to now to try to rebuild the department and keep the morale where it needs to be. Because the next day, the next hour, the next minute, another call comes in, and that's what we have to remember. 
We have tragic events happen every day. We're hurt every day. But those calls continue to come in. And the men and women of the Rockton Fire Department will always be there to answer those calls. How has the department changed? Well, look at some of the equipment we use now versus then. The advent of the SCBA that we wear air on our back to protect ourselves from carcinogens and superheated gases and smoke. Thermal imaging cameras. The day of the Strand fire, the fire was in the, in, the, in the floor and they were able to put it up, but it already traveled up in the walls. We have technology now we can look and see that heat in the walls and potentially chase it. Meters to protect us from carcinogens so that we don't get sick in the buildings. Those are some of the advances. But one of the biggest things people ask me all the time, the fire department performs simple operations, and that's true. The fire brings all the complexity that is needed. We have to keep our operations simple because of the complexities of what is going on in the fire. The dangers still exist with all those technolog technological advances? Absolutely they do. The danger is always there. People say to me all the time, how do you become a firefighter? How do I get that job as a firefighter? I, and I think the brave men and women that are standing behind you would say it's not a job, it's a calling. We step forward every day in a calling to protect people, perfect strangers that we don't know. And I think to that note, I think this is the only profession any mother in the room would tell you when they have a child that is their dearest thing in their life, their nearest and dearest thing in their life. And I have to say that that mother would give up that child to a firefighter in an instant to protect their life. A total stranger. They've never met that firefighter before. But there's an honesty and a trust that goes along with this profession. And I am honored every day to work with those men and women in this department to do that. So I ask today that God bless the Brockton Fire Department yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you. skip them at the beginning, but uh, our former president of Local 144, Archie Gormley, um, I never forget about him. Trust me, he's only a phone call away, but thanks for everything you do, Arch. All right, so I'll get into my speech. So on behalf of the Brockton Firefighters Union Local 144, I would like to thank you all for being here today for the 81st anniversary of the Strand Theater Fire. This fire claimed the lives of 13 Brockton firefighters and left many of their brother firefighters deeply affected, both physically and mentally, as we do for all our brothers and sisters in the fire service who pay the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty, we take time to remember them. We never forget. On this date, each and every year, we remember the 13 Brockton firefighters who were killed, as the chief stated, only a few feet away from where we now gather. We remember the days following the fire, when the funerals took place for all 13 13 individual funeral services. One of those services, actually two of them, that were going on at the same time, had to, they had to stop one funeral procession to let the other funeral procession go by. We remember the children who lost their fathers. We remember the wives who lost their husbands. As the years have gone on, memorials have been constructed to ensure the sacrifices here were not forgotten. Here inside City Hall, one of those reminders is the etched stone of anthracite carved by William J. Owens of IAFF Local 669 Scranton, Pennsylvania. It was carved back in 1941 and remains a centerpiece of our yearly ceremony. Today we are joined by the family of William Owens, and I would like to thank them for making the trip from Scranton to join us here in the remembrance. In later years, we dedicated the memorial outside on City Hall Plaza to ensure that no matter what time of day or what kind of weather, they would stand a reminder to all. In the most recent memorial with the reclamation of the original Squad A that responded to Box 1311 and ca carried members to their last call. These memorials have crossed multiple generations. Each shares a story of how and why they arrived here but the greatest memorial we can truly provide is what we do every year since 1942, coming together here on this day and never forget. 
We will always remember what happened here on this day in 1941, the dedication to duty, the dedication to one another, and the ultimate sacrifice that was given. I ask also that in your prayers, you remember those defending freedom in our armed forces around the globe. Also remember our brother and sister firefighters, police officers, emergent person, emergency personnel, and service today. And please remember all those that have given the ultimate, ultimate sacrifice when called upon. We will now take roll call. Details. Attention! Present! Art! Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder Company 3. <coughs> Lieutenant Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4. <coughs> Firefighter Matthew E. McGarry, Ladder Company 3. <coughs> Firefighter Roy A. McCarrigan, Squad A. Firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A. Firefighter George A. Collins, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Frederick F. Kelly, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Martin E. Lipper, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1. Firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1. Firefighter Bartholomew Hurley, Ladder Company 1.
like to now invite the fire chaplain, Father Westcott, to the podium for the closing prayer. The ancient philosopher Seneca said that in valor there is hope. And so, Lord God, we gather asking you to give us the graces to commit today to being a citizenry worthy of the hope afforded by these brave 13, and that we may be recommitted to be citizens and brothers and sisters in a society that cherishes those dedicated to our safety. May you always bless those who place themselves in harm's way for our safety, and may we never fail to show them gratitude we make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father. And uh, just a side note, um, I'd like to thank the chief. So if you notice, we have added some clergy to the uh, fire department with Reverend Bandros and Father Westcott, um, and, we, and to add to Reverend McCoy. So I'd like to thank the chief. Um, they've been a great godsend. And uh, so we now have three. Um, obviously, we have a, usually a four-man minimum, so I'm sure he's working on that. <laughs> Just a little joke to the man. Duly <laughs> noted. Duly. So I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Um, immediately following the ceremony outside um, for the wreath laying, we'll have a collation down at our Union Hall at 80 Perkins Ave, where we'll have breakfast. Um, everybody is invited. Um, and I'd just like to make note, I hope, so the family members out here, um, you know, I, I met a few of you, if I haven't caught up to everybody, I'd like to catch up to you before uh, we leave today. And I'd especially like to introduce you to the uh, Owens family. For those that don't know, um, the great-granddaughter, Erin um, Quinn of, of, of um, William Owens, was doing some history, ancestry, and um, she came upon the story, and we connected last year, and they came up. And when we told them about the ceremony, obviously invited them, and they accepted without a heartbeat. So I'd like to thank them here. And, and you know, it just, as I talked about earlier, um, all the memorials we have, the biggest honor and remembrance we can do is being here every year. And um, just like your great-grandfather um, carved that out, the dedication and the, the uh, empathy that he had, obviously carries on through your family. We appreciate you being here today. I also like to thank uh, the Brockton Fire Department Honor Guard, Brockton Police Honor Guard, Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums uh, that helped with the ceremony today. Um, also like to thank retired Chief Galligan, as the mayor had noted in the rotunda every year, uh, brings out pictures and the story of what happened on that day. Uh, I also like to recognize the custodial staff that every year sets this place up and they do a great job. Um, and they got the new sound system, so, so far it's been good except when I was speaking, so. <laughs> so with that, I'll, I'll ask everybody to join us outside for the ceremonial wreath laying uh, after the retreat of colors. And again, I thank everybody for being here today. Be safe. And God bless. I ask you now, please stand for the treat of colors. Honor God, right, fix, forward, march.
Thank you, everyone, and we'll proceed outside for the laying of the wreath. Thank you. Details! 